They think, shoot, they were out of order. Amen. Yeah. Some people think that it's supposed to be jumping the pew and hooping and hollering and swinging from the chandeliers. Right. Amen. And if it ain't, they're like, wow, that was really dead, wasn't it? Yeah. The church is supposed to be however God wants to move. That's it, bro. Amen. If He wants to move in the fire, He moves the fire. If He wants to move with the shake, He'll move with the shake. But if He wants to whisper, you better be listening. Right, bro. Amen. Because you might miss what He has to say. Absolutely. Amen. You might miss out on what He has to say. Exactly. I want to talk this morning about something I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. We've actually talked about this. I don't know how much we've talked about it here. Maybe more than what I think, but I know we preached a sermon at the City Hall Revival whenever Brother Brad held the meetings down there. We preached a sermon on this, and a couple of weeks ago, I made mention of it in the sermon that we were preaching about not looking back. Amen? And I made this statement then that I'm going to make today, that the statements that I'm going to make today kind of fly in the face of the Word of Faith movement as we know it today. Amen? The name it and claim it and grab it and nab it and power positive thinking doctrine that has infiltrated the modern day church as we know it. Amen? On, it. Hallelujah. And uh, I made that statement then. I'm making it again today. We're going to the book of Daniel, the third chapter, beginning in about the twelfth verse. Daniel, the third chapter, twelfth verse. And like I said, we've touched on this before. Preached a sermon at City Hall about it. But it's important enough, and the reason I know it's important enough because I run across people all the time, and I'm sure you do too. I can say this morning that I run across people as a pastor, but I'm sure you in your everyday life and your friends that you fellowship with and the other people that you know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, or just regular folk that don't maybe don't even know the Lord, but you run across situations and circumstances and you hear from people all the time. And this is very, very important. It's important enough to go back and look at it again. And again, and again, right. and again. Right. We're going to talk about the three Hebrew children for a few minutes this morning, and we're going to move on to somebody else. But in the 12th verse, and we're picking this up, and you know where we're getting this from is uh, the king has set up a statue. He has commanded. He has put into law, yeah. like Brother David sung about this morning, he has put into law that whenever you hear the sound of the music, I want you to fall down and worship me. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, word gets back to the king that there's three guys that ain't doing that. Yeah. Amen? Three Hebrew there's three that wasn't doing it. Out of all of the crowd that was there, amen, three of them stuck out like a sore thumb because these three boys would not bow and fall down. Amen? Come on. Listen to this in the 12th verse. Somebody's reporting on them. You know, there's always somebody ready to report on you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen? That's the truth. You do something good, they never say nothing about it. But the minute you mess up, they're ready to spread it like wildfire. That's it. Amen? True. Always somebody ready to spread the news. Yes, sir. I wish some people get locked, y'all. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Always want, because they do more damage with their mouth open, Amen, than they would with the shut, so let's shut them up. Come on, brother. So they're going to report on this. There are certain Jews, talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, thou hast, that thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and his fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. And it says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Oh, is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Listen to him. He said, give them an ultimatum. Now if you be ready, when you hear the music, if you're ready to fall down and worship me, he tells them, then it will be well with you. Amen? Come on. But if you don't, he says in the latter part of verse 15, if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Come on. Enemy ever spoke that to you today? Who is that God that's going to deliver you? Yeah. Who is that God that's going to heal you? Yeah. Who is that God that you're calling on? Where's He at? Yeah. Amen? Who is that God that shall deliver you 
out of my hands? The answer of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was clear. It was plain. They pulled no punches. They, you didn't have to try and read between the lines to see what these boys meant. Amen? There was no, no one having to stand by to clarify. Well, Nebuchadnezzar, I think this is what they meant. No, Nebuchadnezzar knew well and good what they meant by the time they quit talking. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Preach. If you don't understand what I believe by the time I get through preaching, I may need to go back and do some correction to my notes. Amen? Yes, sir. I want you to know today that I believe in Jesus. Come on. Amen. Amen. If you're listening today by the way of the airwaves, by radio station, or internet, or Facebook, or YouTube, or, or, or however it is that you listen in, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Amen. Yeah, come on. I want you to realize that. Yes, sir. Got some feedback a little while back from some people who, whenever I said, if you come to me to be baptized, I baptize you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on. They thought I was saying that there was no Father. They thought I was apostolic to the point to where that I said, you know, there was no Father, no Holy Ghost, just Jesus and nothing else. Has to be a Father. Amen. Right. But all power, all authority, all power given to the Son. Amen. All power given to His name. Right. So I want you to know how they, they why they thought any otherwise is beyond me because they've been listening to me preach for years and I've said more than once that Jesus Christ is all powerful. He was God in the flesh. Amen. His name is the only way to be saved. Everything that you do in word or deed has to be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I don't know how they got confused there and I don't want you to be confused today and Nebuchadnezzar wasn't confused about what these boys believed by the time they got through talking. Amen. Amen. I want you to understand today that Jesus is the only way. I want you to understand today that there is only one God. Amen? Yeah. Not Allah, not Buddha, not this other mess that goes on. Amen? Right. Not Muhammad. God. Amen? Come on. And He came to this earth in the robe of a fleshly man, and that man's name was not Muhammad. Amen? Oh. That man's name was Jesus. The English translation of his name, Yeshua, was Jesus. Amen? Oh, Jesus. Exactly. In the flesh. He's God in the flesh. Yes, sir. Amen? When he stood before Lazarus' tomb and called for him to come out of death, he was God in the flesh. Yeah. Whenever he went into the, and touched the damsel and said, Talitha Kumi, damsel arrived, he was God in the flesh. When he walked past blind Bartimaeus and said, and healed him of his sickness, amen? He him of his eyes and he'd give him his eyesight back. Healed him of his blindness. Brother Billy was God in the flesh. When he came walking on the waves of the water and the disciples seen him and he bid Peter to come to him, he was God in the flesh. Amen. When they nailed him to the tree, he surrendered his power to them. They couldn't have done it unless he surrendered power because he was God in the flesh. Amen. When he gave up the ghost, he gave it up as God in the flesh. Whenever Joseph of Arimathea carried his body from the tree to the tomb, he was still God in the flesh. Amen. On the third day when they went and the stone was rolled away, he came up out of the tomb. He said, I lay down my life freely. I'll pick it up again because he was God in the flesh. Amen. Yes, sir. He was God in the flesh. Absolutely. 100%. Is that clear what I believe this morning? Yes, sir. Amen. You get it? Jesus. God in the flesh. Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. No other means of salvation. No other means of healing. No other means of peace. No other means of truth and life today other than through Jesus Christ. Period. Nobody else. Yes, sir. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fixing to make it plain to the king what they believe. Yeah. Come on. You see, that's our problem sometimes. We don't make it plain enough. That's right. People know exactly what we believe. Come on. Like a preacher got on Larry King. Mm-hmm. I still don't know what he believes. Depending on who you're talking to. Right. A lot of these preachers, Brother Sleeth, it depends on what crowd they're with. Right. What they believe. Right. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the only way. Oh, yeah. I believe that. Well, what about these people who don't believe in Jesus? They're going to hell with him. No, I wouldn't say that. Well, you just did whenever you said Jesus was the only way. You're confused. Amen. Mm -hmm. A confused man. Unstable in all of his ways. Amen. Unstable. I wouldn't follow him. Right. I wouldn't follow him. I wouldn't follow his doctrine. Right. If you don't know who Jesus is, oh, hallelujah. If you don't show, if you don't listen, we need to inspect some of these great men and women of God that we've been lifted up on pedestals. Right. We need to inspect their doctrine. Right. 
See, they got crowned long ago as being men and women of God. Yeah. I brought his name up before. I bring it up again this morning. William Branham. Yeah. As I was being raised up, I heard his name mentioned with people like Catherine Coleman. Yeah. And and Brother Cole. And Brother Shambach. And on down the line. Amen. And I ain't saying all of those people are bad, hadn't inspected all of their doctrine. I'm telling you this. Come on. There were several flies in the ointment of William Branham. Whole group of followers had built their faith on him and what they called the message. Yeah. Amen? Right. But you don't have to dig too far below the surface to find out just because this man could pull a rabbit out of a hat didn't mean his anointing came from God. Right. Inspect their doctrine. I'm here to tell you today that if their doctrine, if their teaching does not line up with the Word of God, they are not sent by God. That's true. Oh, that's stiff. That's hard. That's... Amen? Right. But if it don't line up with the Word of God, it's the truth. Ain't it, Brother Bill? Right. Amen? Yeah. Come on. You talk, and, and that's what we've done. See, we've crowned an old great, great man of God. And they did so because they saw miracles. Right. They saw wonders. Listen, God ain't the only one that does wonders. The devil does them too. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Look over there whenever Moses stood before Pharaoh in Egypt and see what some of the magicians, magicians did. Mm -hmm. They imitated some of the things that Moses did. Right. Amen? Right. They were able to do a lot of those things. Over there in the book of Revelation, it says one of the ways that the Antichrist is going to deceive people is signs and wonders. Yeah. You better look below the signs and the wonders and find out where that power is coming from. Yeah. Amen? Come on. We need to be clear in what we teach, yeah, what we sure. believe. Amen? Exactly. Listen to what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said whenever the king told them. If you bow down, it'll be well. If you don't, we fix them to throw you into the fire furnace. And who is that God said will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Amen? We have no problem answering you. Whenever someone walks up to you and goes to talking religion with you, amen, you should have no, you should not pause and try to figure out what you're going to say. You should have no problem at all answering them. Yeah. Jesus is the only one. When that man approached me at McDonald's and said, yeah, there's, there's a lot of gods out there. I said, yeah, but there's an able one way. Amen. On. They're able one way. Yeah. You can talk about a lot of religions. You can talk about a lot of gods. You can talk about a lot of things. You can talk about a lot of churches, a lot of denominations. A terrible one way to heaven. Right. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. So don't be don't be careful to answer them in that matter. Right. Don't compromise your doctrine. Don't, don't, don't let somebody ever walk away from you thinking, well, I don't know what they believe. Come on. Be clear about what you believe. Be clear today that your faith is in his righteousness, right. in his finished work of the cross, and nothing else. Be clear today that your faith rests in Jesus Christ and nothing yeah. else. Not your works, not religion, not denominationalism, but Jesus and His blood. Amen? Right. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. It says, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and He will deliver us out of thine hand, O King. Right. Now that'll preach Amen. in the mega churches as we know it today. Right. If you stopped right there, you could preach that in the Word of Faith churches. God is able to deliver us. He will deliver us. But they didn't stop there. But if not, hear that? Yeah. All these boys don't speak in some doubt now, ain't they? Yeah. You see, there's two popular doctrines. Number one, don't speak no doubt, because if you do, it won't come to pass. Amen? Number two, don't ask more than once. Because if you do, that shows a lack of faith. You've already asked God. Just start claiming it. Don't ask Him again. Because if you do, it shows a lack of faith. Oh, I beg to differ with you today and so does the Word of God. The, the boys here standing just feet away from the fiery furnace says our God is able to deliver us. He will deliver us out of that hand. But if not, and see this situation is going to come in your life, sooner or later you're going to pray for somebody and they ain't going to get healed. Right. Sooner or later, you're going to pray for an answer and you ain't going to get the answer that you wanted. Amen. I can't understand. I don't understand it. Don't, don't ask me why because that's above my pay grade. 
I don't know why everybody don't get healed, but I know everybody don't get healed. Come on. Amen? That's true. I know that everybody does not get healed. Not in this life anyway. Yeah. Amen? True. <laughs> Ain't going to be no sickness over there. Oh, wow. See, we got this tunnel vision thing going on. All we can see is this, what we call this life in front of us. Yeah. We don't understand the big picture of things. Amen? We don't understand that what's at stake is eternal and not just this temporal thing that we call life that is a vapor and that vanishes away. Amen? Oh, tell it. Sooner or later... You ain't going to get the answer that you want from God. That's right, Sooner or later, you're going to be praying for somebody. Heal them, God. Heal them. Heal them. And they die. Right. Sooner or later, you may already face that. Amen. Most of us probably already have. Yes, sir. Amen. True. Sooner or later, you're going to have to answer the question, what am I going to do when God don't? Yeah. Amen. Come on. Oh, it's easy. To run in here on Tuesday night or Sunday morning with a testimony whenever you've seen God open the heavens and heal a disease. Right. Or, or, or move in a, in a financial situation, whatever the case. That's right, bro. What about when you've been praying and you ain't seen nothing? Come on. You've been praying and pleading and asking God and still nothing has happened. Right. What are you going to do when God don't? Well, the Hebrew boys had this to say. If He does not deliver us, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Did you hear that? Come on. He's able, Brother Bill, He will. But if He don't, we're still not going to bow down. How many times people try to make bargains with God? Amen. God, if You'll do this, I'll serve You the rest of my life. Well, suppose if God wants to see if you'll serve Him whether He does it or not. Are we worshiping the gifts or are we worshiping the giver? Amen? What turns us on today? The miracles or the miracle worker? Amen? Hallelujah! Who are we living for today? Are we living to see the miracles or are we living to one day stand before the miracle worker? Hallelujah! Come on. What are you going to do when God don't? When you pray for a loved one and they die anyway. When you pray for a financial situation and you lose your home anyway. Whenever you pray for a job and somebody else gets it. What are you going to do whenever God don't? Come on, brother. The Hebrew boy said it don't matter. If He does or if He don't, we know He's able. We know He will. Honey, I know He's able today. I know He will. I've seen Him. We've got a whole book of testimonies this morning of when God's moved, healed, delivered, and set free. There's people in here today sitting on these pews. You've got testimonies of when God healed, when He delivered, and when He set free. Oh, Amen? Fella. I, in my own life, yes. have seen God heal and deliver and set free. Amen. But I've also been in the place where I cried and I prayed and nothing happened. Right. Amen. What are we going to do then? Are we going to decide to fish or cut bait? Are we going to run? Are we going to go back on God because He didn't come through for us? Are we going to stand in the faith and say, Though God slay me, yet I will trust Him. I will serve Him. Hallelujah. Oh my Lord, I'm talking about a bride bridegroom relationship this morning. Amen. I ain't talking about the kind of relationship you have with God. When you use Him as a vending machine, you put in your prayers, He spits out the answer. Amen. I'm talking about loving Him, not for what He can do, but for who He is this morning. He is God Almighty. He is God of the universe. He is the God that died on the cross for you. Yeah, tell it. What are you going to do Amen. when God don't? And there will be times in your life yes, when God don't. Amen? Amen, that's the truth. Then what are you going to do? The only thing been getting you by is the miracles you've been seeing. Right. You can get a crowd. If you went out of here this morning spreading word that we was having signs, wonders, and miracles. Right. People being healed of leprosy. People being healed of blindness. People being healed of death. Right. We wouldn't be able to get them in here Tuesday night. Come on. Because they'll follow them signs and wonders. Exactly. Amen. Absolutely. See, that's what they, a lot of them followed Jesus for. Amen. When He was healing the sick, when He was raising the dead, yeah. you couldn't turn with a stick, they so thick, Brother Bill. 
But when he was laying down his life on the cross, where was he at then? Yeah. Where was he at then? Amen. Amen. Same way with the crowd we got today. Yes, sir. They'll pack it in. 500 to 1,000, Brother David said, to hear a gospel singing. That's it. Try to get that many people in to hear the true Word of God. Amen. I'm talking about an old-fashioned country preacher to break open the Word of God and preach him a Holy Ghost filled message. Right. Amen. Come on. I ain't talking about this man be pamby feel good mess we got today. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking about preaching the Word of God. Come on. They'll follow that. You see, believing is easy right. when you can see it. And hang with me. I'm going to let you go in just a few minutes. Believing is seeing. Amen. Believing, yeah. when you can see it, believing is easy. Come on, tell it. Amen. For most people anyway. Right. When they see it, they believe it. Some people even question it when they see it. Amen. Yeah, that's true. So it's easy. Number two, believing in anticipation. Listen, it ain't easy, but it's easier than the third one we're fixing to talk about. It's easier for you to believe whenever you believe with all your heart. This ain't no doubt. God's going to do it. There ain't no doubt about it. It's going to happen any second now. That's easier than the next step we're fixing to take. Right. So seeing and believing is one thing. Yeah. Believing with anticipation is another. Come on. But believing regardless is a whole other ball game. Yes, sir. Amen? Come on, preach. Believing regardless is a whole other thing. Right. Believing whether God moves or not, that's something else. Yes, sir. Believe in whether you can hear Him or not, that's something else. Believe in whether you can see Him or not, that's something else. Believe in whether you can feel Him or not, that's something else. Oh, hey, I know it ain't in the field, but thank God we can feel it. Amen. Yeah. But even if you can't oh. feel it, that don't make it any less real. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still God. He's God when He answers with yes. He's God when He answers with no. Amen. He's God when you can hear Him talking. He's God whenever you can't hear anything. He's still God. What are you going to do when you don't? Are you going to give up on God? Are you going to stand strong in the faith? Listen, this fight that we're fighting is not one of an earthly realm. This is a spiritual warfare. This contention, this race that we're running today is not one for worldly riches. Regardless of what a lot of the popular preachers are preaching today, we do not contend today for earthly riches and fame and fortune. Amen? To bestow upon ourselves and upon all of our family members. Amen? Yes, sir. No, we're in this race today. The finish line is not in this life. That's right, brother. Amen? That's true. Our goal is heaven today. Not a kingdom on this earth. Right. Amen? Come on. Our goal, our finish line. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. Amen? Kept the faith. Yes, sir. Think about that for a minute. He kept the faith. Yes, sir. He held on to his faith. Come on. Even whenever God didn't. Everybody, what are you talking about? Come on. You remember Paul said he asked God three times mm -hmm. to take away that thorn in the flesh. Yeah. Now, he wouldn't have asked the second time had God done it the first. Yeah. He wouldn't have asked the third time had God done it the second. Come on. He kept asking. And then he got his answer. My grace it's is sufficient. sufficient for you. I got news for you today. God's grace, whether He does or whether He don't, His grace is still sufficient for you today. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Paul said, I've kept the faith even when I didn't get the answer that I thought I wanted. Amen. God always answers, just not always what we want. Yes, sir. He either says yes, He says wait, or He says no. Come on. Amen. Amen. It's the times that he says no that we don't understand the most. That's right. We can deal with it. Oh, when he says yes, we're woo woo woo. Yeah. When he says wait, that's that anticipation I was talking to you about. Right. We're, oh, it's about to happen. I know it's gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. Yeah. Amen. Come on. But when you don't hear nothing. Yeah. When you don't see nothing. Amen. Then what? I think that's the moment of faith right there. Come on, brother. That's when faith really kicks in. Yes, it's put to the test. It's put to the. It takes more faith to ask the second time when nothing happened the first time. Right. And these 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 doofuses out there that say, "Well, you don't don't ask but once. If you ask again, it's a show of unbelief. Now, if you ask again, it's a show of faith. Right. Because you asked first time, 
And nothing happened. Come on. Amen. Like a woman and the unjust judge. Amen. Come on. Listen what she listen what happened to her. Luke 18 and 2. Jesus said that there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. Now what's Jesus teaching them? He's teaching them how to pray. But afterward, he said with her, after what? After she asked some more. Yeah. After she knocked some more. Amen. After she persevered. This week I was having trouble with a program that I put onto my computer. And it was, it was having a bad reaction with another program that I have on my computer. And I was getting aggravated with it, and the boys were there. And Brother Isaac, when he seen how frustrated I was getting, looked over at me and said, Biddy, that's what he called me, Biddy, do you remember what persevere means? <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah, I remember. He said, I think that's probably what you need to do right now. <clears throat> persevere. Keep trying. Don't give up. Amen. Regardless of how it looks, don't give up. I got news for you. You're going to need some of this kind of faith we're talking about this morning if you're going to endure to the end. Amen. The Bible says he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. You're going to need some of that faith that, oh, I believe in God even whenever I don't see him deliver me. Amen. How about Stephen when they took him outside the city to stone him? You know as well as I do, the church was praying for him. You know Stephen wasn't praying, oh, Lord, let him kill me today. No, but they might not have got the answer that they wanted, but what does Stephen do? The Bible says while he's laying there being stoned to death, he says, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Hallelujah. He decided, I know God's able. He can deliver me. He will deliver me. But if he don't, I'm going to walk over in the glory lane, hold to the nail scarred hands of Jesus. I'm going to have my faith intact. Hallelujah. What are you going to do when God don't? And that time will come. If it hasn't already came in your life, it will come. It will come because everybody you lay hands on and pray for ain't going to get healed. Ever love them that you pray, God, please don't take them. Yeah. Sooner or later, one of them's going to be took. Amen. Right. Then what are you going to do? Are you going to serve Him because you're serving the miracles instead of the miracle worker? Amen. Are you going to seek His face and all the time you've been seeking His hand? Amen. Are you going to hold on by faith? Come on, brother. Through your pain, on, through your grief, me. through your sickness. Yeah. Are you going to hold on by on. faith? Amen. <clears throat> Listen, we're gonna to have to we're gonna to have to resolve within ourselves that no matter what, we're gonna serve him. Whether we get what we want, whether we don't. Whether God moves or whether it seems like God don't, are we gonna serve him? Are we gonna walk with him? Are we gonna go the road of the Via Della Rosa with him? Amen. You may have to go through some suffering before you get out of here. Right. I know that goes against the grain of the modern day church today that teaches that it's your best life now. You can have everything on a silver platter. Amen. But the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Amen. Amen. Sooner or later, you're going to see affliction. Sooner or later, you're going to go through things. Right. Sooner or later, it ain't going to be the way you want it to be. Come then on. what are you going to do? Then what's going to be your reaction? Then how are you going to react to God? Amen. Yeah. What are you going to do when God don't? Come on. Are you going to serve Him anyway? Yes. My, my, my. What old Job do? Oh, he murmured and complained and got down on himself some. But he came out on the other side. Though God slay me, yet will I serve him. Amen. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Right. When he has tried me, I will come forth Amen. as gold. All right. So this old judge, he says, after what he said within himself, though I fear not God, yeah. I don't even regard man. Yet because the widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Yeah. That's by her continual coming. Now what's Jesus teaching them? Prayer. Right. Her continual coming. She weary me. Right. Did you hear that? Amen. So He avenged her of her adversary. Why? Because she knocked. And when nothing happened, she knocked again. Amen. And when nothing happened, she knocked again. 
And when nothing happens, she knocked again. I know you've been down on the altar, soaking it with your tears, asking God to save your kids. And the more you pray, the worse it seems like they get. And so I listen. If anybody tells you, somebody told me one time, they said, well, it's time for you to quit praying and let somebody else pray. Tell them to shut up. Amen. Keep knocking. Keep asking. Keep petitioning the throne of God. It don't matter what you see happening. It don't matter how they react. Keep asking God to move. Amen. When God don't, what are you going to do? Are you going to quit praying? Are you going to quit asking? Are you going to keep standing in face saying, God, I know you're able to do it. I know you will do it. But even if you don't, you're going to find me here praying. Hallelujah. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let go of the horns of the altar. Amen. This is what Jesus says here. Praise the Lord. Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge His own elect? I'm in verse 7, Luke 18. Which cried day and night unto Him. Oh, He bare long with them. I tell you that He will avenge them speedily. He will answer your prayers. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Sister Nancy didn't use the Scripture this morning, shall He find faith on the earth? Yeah. Praise when God don't, what are you going to do? What will you do? When God don't. Are you going to quit praying? Are you going to quit serving Him? Or whenever He returns, He's going to find you still holding on to the faith. All right. Is He going to find faith? What kind of faith? The kind of faith that endures. Amen. The kind of faith that doesn't ride on the tide of answered prayers. Right. Amen. Oh my goodness. I know that a lot of people ain't going to get this this morning, but I hope you do. Oh, if you're out there listening to me, I hope you get this. Because many of you is in a situation, in a place where you thought, I might as well just give up. I ain't getting no answer from God. Listen, it ain't in getting the answer. Amen. Yeah. It's in the one who is able to answer the prayer. Amen. Oh, I have decided today, when people come to me and say, Preacher, I don't understand it. Yeah. I prayed for them and they died anyway. Yeah. Yet these people over here, they're healthy as an ox. So why, why, why? I've got a scripture for you this morning. I've decided that that answer is below my pay grade. Amen? <laughs> i got a scripture for you if I can find it. <laughs> it's in Isaiah the thirty. Isaiah, I'm sorry, Isaiah the 55th chapter, the 8th verse. You can write it down. I'm going to read it real quick. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I've decided today that God, even if I don't like it, God still knows best. Amen. His thoughts are above my thoughts. He knows better than I do. He knows more than I do. Yes. Amen? I can't tell you why everybody don't get healed. I can't tell you why all your prayers don't get answered. But I can tell you this. If you hold on to God, if you have your faith rooted and grounded in the miracle worker and not the miracles, Amen? You will come out victorious. Yes, because this life is a vapor. It appears for a little while and then it vanishes away. Amen. But we are victorious. Read the back of the book this morning. Yes, Amen. Right. Maybe you have maybe you're using the Bible like a suspense novel. And you're sitting on the edge of your seat, not knowing who's going to win this thing. What's going to happen? I don't know who's going to survive, who's going to be the victor. Read the back of the book. Right. Amen. Amen. Read the back of the book and you'll find out who the victor is. Right. Read the back of the book and you'll find out that you're a winner either yeah, way. Right. Read the back of the book and you'll find out that you are found over the book of Revelations in the, in the midst of a number that cannot be numbered that has their robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I'm a shot, I'm a shot, I'm a shot. victory is already yours regardless of what happens in this life. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, I could jump a few, but what's the dog gone fat? Hallelujah! My, my, my. What are you going to do when God don't? Are you going to hold on? You going to give up? What are you going to give up? What are you going to go back to for the bill? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go, Brother Rod? If you don't get the healing you've been seeking the Lord for, what are you going to do? You got nowhere else to turn. You got to all just like Jesus turned to his disciples one time. Come on. And he said, Well, you two go away. Yeah. And their answer was this. Oh, you didn't have room between the lines to get this either. 
to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. I might have to crawl across the finish line, but by the grace of God, I will finish. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. By the grace of God, I will finish. Holding to his nail-scarred hands. Amen. Think about Joseph. Right. Think about Joseph over there. He's promised, he's given dreams that he's going to be ruler. Right. First thing he does, he goes and tells his brothers, listen, sometimes you'll keep your dreams to yourself. That's yeah. right, brother. Amen. That's the truth. Because they got jealous. That's right. And they got mad. Come on. Amen. Be careful. Listen to me. Be careful who you tell your dreams to. Yes, sir. Amen. Right. Be careful who you share your vision with. Amen. Because they can smack you down real quick. Been there and done that. Amen. Probably been on both sides. God forgive me. Probably been on both sides of that. All right. He goes and tells his brothers what God showed him. God's giving him this powerful dream. Yeah. Look what God's going to do. What's the next thing that happens? He gets thrown into a pit. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. It would have been easy to give up. That's right. Amen. Right. What happens after that? Instead of killing him, we see, some, we see a tribe coming. Let's sell him into slavery. Boom. So they sell him into slavery. What happens after that? He gets sold to Potiphar Come on. to be his servant. Right. While they're in Potiphar's house, the Lord blesses him. He gets stronger. Come on. You might be thinking, wow, it's really going to happen now. Have you, ever, have you ever been to the place where God promised you something and you was, thought you was right on the verge of it happening? Mm -hmm. I can see it coming to pass. And then boom, you get the wind knocked out of you. Right. That's what happened to him. True. What happens? That old witch, Potiphar's wife, exactly. had no lust demon on her. Right. She got looking at Joseph. Yeah. He looks good. Yeah. So while Potiphar's away, she tries to get him to play. Amen. Come on. Joseph won't do it. He's a man of integrity. How easy would it have been to him to say, "Well, forget God. He promised me these things in dreams. I've been thrown into a pit." I've been left for dead. I've been sold into slavery twice. I just fooled around with the master's old lady. Come on, preach. No, but when God didn't, he still did. And then he held on to faith. Right. What was he going to do when God didn't? <laughs> so his wife tries to get him to sleep with her. And he runs away. On his way out, she grabs his coat. Yes, he runs out naked. And what's she do? She runs and tells the servants, look what he's done. He tried to come in and attack me. He tried to come in and attack me. So what happens to him? He's put in prison. Here he sits in prison. After the things that God showed him, after the things that God promised him, it's been easy for him to give up, does he? No. He still don't give up. Boy, you're talking about persevering. Right. And you know the rest of it. You know how he interpreted some dreams there? Finally, word got to Pharaoh that he could interpret dreams and he went and interpreted one about the famine that was coming up on the land. Seven good years, seven bad years. Before you know it, he's at the right hand of Pharaoh, second only in command to him. And his brothers come before him and the story of forgiveness and all of that. And the whole time that this is going on, say, why didn't Joseph give up? Why didn't he just give in? Why? Because he answered that at the end whenever he said, listen, you meant it for evil, the enemy meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Hallelujah. All things, even the loss of your loved ones, God will use that for your good. Amen? The grief that you go through, the pain that you go through, the suffering you go through, it's not sent to destroy you, but it's sent for your good. It's allowed for a purpose in our lives. Amen. What are you going to do when God don't? Is He going to find faith right. when He comes? Mom. Is He going to find you enduring? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I'm closing this morning. I'm going to go back to what the Hebrew children said. But if not, was that doubt? Was that unbelief? Hardly, my friend. My, my, my. <laughs> they were just simply saying, God's able. He will. Right. But if He don't, I'm still going to serve Him. Amen. They was in love with Him. They were in love with Him and not things. Amen. They were in love with they were in love with the miracle worker yes, and not the miracles. Amen. Sooner or later, you ain't going to get an answer. That's right. What are you going to do when God don't? 
Amen. Amen. The grace that the Lord spoke to Paul and said, My grace is sufficient for thee. That same grace is sufficient for you this morning. Right. Amen. Come on. And it all comes down to faith. Amen. Right. I know we talk a lot about faith, but how can you not? How can you not talk about faith this morning? The Bible says, By grace are you saved. How? Through faith. Yeah. The only way you can come to God is through faith. You must believe that He is. Amen. Right. The Bible says, I know we talk about this a lot, the Bible says over and over, the just shall live by faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. We can go on and on about faith this morning. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. I tell you, this kind of faith is what you're going to have to have to get out of here. Because right. sooner or later, you ain't going to see the miracle. Right. You're not going to hear the wind. You're not going to see the lightning. You're not going to see the thunder. Come on. What are you going to do then? Sooner or later, the 5,000 ain't going to be getting fed. Sooner or later, the dead's not going to be getting raised. Come on. Sooner or later, you're going to be standing in the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Where there's no glorification, where there's no transfiguration. Yeah. But there's weight and there's sorrow. Sooner or later you're going to stand in the valley of sorrow. Right. What are you going to do then? What are you going to do then? Right. What are you going to do then? He delivers you out of the last valley. Are you going to die in the next one or are you just going to keep holding on? Yeah. Are you going to keep holding on until you get through it? Amen. Yeah. There's an old song that I printed out the words for. Because remember a little bit of it. Brother David probably knows it all. Time is filled with swift transition. Amen. Naught of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Right. Trust in Him. He will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring. Yeah. If, if your earthly friends forsake you, still more closely to Him right. clean. Amen. Amen. You got to hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Situations change, things change. Brother Mike said something Tuesday night that blessed my soul. I appreciate Brother Mike. Yes. Hallelujah. I appreciate Brother Mike. I just want you to know that. I appreciate what he's been through. I appreciate where God's brought him from. And I appreciate the fact that God still uses him to bring forth the word that can feed me. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, and this was in passing, He said, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, that went all over me. You know why? And I wasn't even thinking about the healings because He was able to heal yesterday, He can heal today, He can heal tomorrow. All that's all true. Right. I was thinking about His grace and His mercy. Amen. Brother Sleece, I was thinking about how that I have needed His mercy, Brother Beal, in the past. Yeah. And trust me, I know me, I'm going to need His mercy again in the future. And it's a comfort to me to know He has promised that His mercy will be there tomorrow just like it's there today. His forgiveness for the beer will be there tomorrow just like it's there today. Amen? Because I'm going to need some forgiveness before I get out of here. Y'all might not. You know, y'all may be. Y'all may not. Y'all may not have all the forgiveness y'all ever going to need. But Brother, Bill, Brother Billy is going to have to have some forgiveness before he gets out of here. And I thank God today that His mercy was there yesterday. It's there today. And when I fall tomorrow, and I will fall, it'll be there for me tomorrow. Right. His love was there yesterday. It's there today. It'll be there tomorrow. Amen. His grace was sufficient for me yesterday. Yes. It's sufficient for me today. Right. His grace will be sufficient for me tomorrow. Yes. Praise God. Whether He does or whether He doesn't, that ain't going to change anything. That's it. I'm in love. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The bridegroom has stolen my heart. Whether God does or whether He doesn't, I'm still going to hold on to Him. Hope you are too. Amen. Yes, Hope you can resolve that within yourself today that regardless of what happens, whether your prayer gets answered or not, mm -hmm. at least in the way that you think it should be, I hope you can resolve to hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. What are you going to do when God don't? Someone else has something.